the South African fighter that never took off. It was sleek, ambitious, designed to be fast, agile, and capable of going head-to-head -head with some of the most advanced jets in the world. In the early 1990s, South Africa set out to become the first African nation to develop its own advanced fighter aircraft. It was called the Atlas Cheetah C Replacement Program and later morphed into something far more daring, the Denel Ruivalk for air support and then the Project Carver Stealth Fighter. But while the dream was big, the politics were bigger. And in the end, what could have become Africa's first indigenously developed high-performance jet fighter never made it off the ground. Literally. This is the story of the South African fighter jet that never took off, a case study in how vision sanctions and strategic confusion collided to ground a nation's aerospace ambitions. During the 1970s and 1980s, apartheid-era South Africa was subject to increasing international sanctions. But while the world tried to isolate it, the regime responded by building a massive domestic military-industrial complex. By the 1980s, South Africa had one of the most sophisticated arms industries in the Southern Hemisphere. Its engineers reverse-engineered French Mirage III jets into the upgraded Atlas Cheetah, developed advanced tank systems, and launched the Ruivalk Attack Helicopter Project. With combat experience in Angola and Namibia, the South African Air Force, or SAAF, knew what it wanted. A modern multi-role fighter designed for speed, survivability, and deep strike capability. The Mirage fleet was aging. The Cheetahs were a stopgap. South Africa needed a next-generation fighter, and with no one willing to sell it new jets, it would have to build one itself. In the late 1980s, Project Carver was born. It was the most ambitious South African aerospace program ever conceived. Designed by Atlas Aircraft Corporation, the predecessor to Denal, Carver was envisioned as a twin-engine, delta-wing, high-performance strike fighter. It was meant to replace the Cheetah and be capable of supersonic flight, high maneuverability, and precision ground attack. Early design work was heavily influenced by the French Mirage 2000 and Israeli Lavi fighters. Some observers even speculated that Israeli engineers were quietly involved. While no official photos were ever released, leaked schematics suggested a sleek, canard-equipped aircraft that bore more than a passing resemblance to the Eurofighter Typhoon, or Saab Gripen. According to a 1990 Jane's Defense Weekly report, Carver was projected to have a top speed of Mach 2.0, an internal weapons load including guided munitions, advanced radar and electronic warfare capabilities, range exceeding 1,500 kilometers with external tanks. But there was a problem, money. The development cost was estimated at 1.2 billion South African Rand in 1990, approximately 600 million US dollars at the time, a colossal figure for an economy under sanctions. As Carver entered early prototyping phases, the political landscape shifted. In 1990, Nelson Mandela was released from prison, apartheid was beginning to unravel, and with that, the justification for isolationist military investment began to vanish. The government was transitioning and the world was opening up to South Africa again. Why spend billions on building your own jet when you can now buy one? By 1991, Carver had consumed over 200 million rand and political support began to dry up. The South African Treasury, facing demands for domestic reform, housing, and infrastructure, began to question the program's necessity. In 1992, Project Carver was officially cancelled. Not a single prototype had flown. The official reasoning? Strategic reassessment and new international procurement opportunities. In truth, the project collapsed under the weight of its own ambition, lack of resources, and a rapidly changing political environment. With the door now open to global defense markets, South Africa began shopping. In 1999, the country signed a massive $6 billion arms deal that included 26 Saab JAS-39 Gripens for the SAAF, Hawk trainers for BAE systems, submarines and corvettes from Germany. The Gripens were chosen for their multi-role capabilities, affordability, and ease of maintenance. They remain the frontline fighter of the SAAF today. But the Gripen fleet, while capable, never matched the strategic ambition of the Carver program. In fact, by 2022, only 12 of the 26 Gripens were airworthy due to maintenance backlogs and budget cuts, 
A 2021 parliamentary report criticized the SAAF for allowing its combat readiness to decline by over 60% in just five years. So what did South Africa lose when it shelved its stealthy dream? 1. Industrial momentum. Atlas Aircraft had grown into a serious design shop. Engineers trained during Carver were laid off or moved abroad. Some ended up working in the UK, Sweden, or Israel. 2. Technological sovereignty. Carver could have given South Africa full control over its aerial defense doctrine. Today, the country is reliant on European support and logistics. 3. Defense credibility. For a brief period, South Africa was poised to be the aerospace leader of the global south. After Carver's cancellation, that status slipped away. In a 2006 interview, former Danel aerospace engineer Andre Rue said, We had the designs, we had the brains, we just didn't have the political time or economic freedom. The story of Carver is not just about a jet that didn't fly, it's about what happens when geopolitical shifts outpace strategic planning. Today, South Africa's defense sector is a shadow of its former self. Danel, the state arms manufacturer, has faced financial crises labor strikes, and corruption scandals. Its order books have dried up. Many of its top engineers have moved abroad. Yet the hunger remains. There are whispers of new partnerships with Brazil, India, and even Turkey. Some have proposed a pan-African defense consortium to pool resources and revive local manufacturing. In 2023, Danel announced it would refocus on UAV development and modular weapon systems. But another carver? Unlikely. As defense analyst Helmoud romer Heitman put it in a recent defense conference, South Africa won't build another fighter until it figures out what it wants to be, a regional peacekeeper, a diplomatic partner, or a global arms innovator. Until then, the ghost of Carver will haunt hangars that never saw it fly. South Africa had everything but time, a capable defense industry, combat experience, a blueprint for self-reliance. And still, it couldn't make its fighter jet fly. The Atlas Carver is now a cautionary tale of ambition outrunning capacity, of politics overriding vision, of a country caught between isolation and reintegration. But it's also a symbol, a reminder that sometimes the boldest projects don't crash, they just quietly fade away. Thanks for watching. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Could South Africa ever revive its fighter program? Was Carver a lost opportunity or an inevitable failure? Like, subscribe, and join us next time as we dissect more billion-dollar weapons programs that never got off the ground.